Howdy folks, John here. Tonight I thought we'd do a little RC tech video. I thought we'd talk about anti-spark LiPo connectors. These little things. Now I got a fair number of questions on them regarding what they are, how they work, and why or do you even need to use them. And since I'm trying out these China Hobby Line LiPo packs for the first time, I figured this would be a good time to cover anti-spark connectors while I'm fitting them to the uh, new packs here. Now, by the way, I will do another video on the CHL packs with my overall thoughts after I get a few dozen flights in on them. Now, I've been getting lots of people recommending these as some of the best reasonable cost lipos here in Canada, being about half the price of the Gen Zace packs I normally fly with, which I love, but uh, yeah, at half the price, not a bad deal warehouses in many different countries so you don't have to pay import fees and here in Canada they've got a warehouse so we'll see how they work. First impressions by the way are very good. Decent wiring, decent weight and uh, very respectable brand new out of the box internal resistance readings as you can see. Of course only real world longer term usage will give the true story so stay tuned for that. Before getting to the anti-spark connectors themselves, however, better discuss why we even get sparks when plugging in our LiPo packs on higher voltage RC models. I thought we'd start out just by showing a spark demo before we get to why they actually spark. Obviously, if you fly higher voltage machines, you've already seen this, but if you're new to HV, like 6S or larger, this may come as a shock. No pun intended. So this is a T-Rex 800. It usually puts on a pretty good spark show uh, when you plug in the ESC. This is a series harness. So we've got the two 6S LiPo packs. So this is a 12S system, fully charged. It's getting about 50 volts when you first plug it in. You're probably not gonna be able to see the spark because it's within the connector pins, but hopefully you can hear it. I'm gonna put the microphone right down by the plug. So hopefully you heard that. I saw a bit of a spark, but uh, the camera probably didn't pick it up. But now we'll look inside a connector pin just to see what that spark does over time. So here's a female XT90 connector. As you can see, it's been pretty badly pitted and carboned up, especially on the right pin here. And here's the male. This is the worst one I could find. I think I've thrown most of them out. I thought I had some better ones but the tips of the pins are just starting to uh, pit. And over time, uh, that will just cause increased resistance. The majority of the pitting is confined to the upper part when you first plug the connector in, but over time that carbon pitting and tracing will work its way down and you'll just increase the uh, resistance of the connector and you'll get a voltage sag under high current demand loads. Now the reason we get sparks when we plug in our higher voltage lipos is because of these little things. You have probably seen them before. They pretty much are on every ESC. They'll usually be sticking out the ends. Large machines will have big ones and they even have cap packs in them, which are additional capacitors. The reason these electrolytic capacitors are used is to prevent something called ripple voltage. For those of you who have got my setup and tips ebook, I cover ripple voltage and how to deal with it in chapter six. So uh, you may want to have a look at that if you've got it. They reduce lows and highs in voltage as your ESC and motor are drawing more or less current. And the MOSFETs in here, the FETs, the things that switch the fields on and off for your uh, brushless motors, they want very consistent smooth voltage. And the more ripple voltage, the worse it is for your ESC and your capacitors. It's cumulative degradation, so it adds up over time until something just fails. Usually the cap blows or who knows what. Anyway, you want to keep ripple low. 5% of pack voltage is what I like. If you've got a data logging ESC, you can actually see that. It will give you what the ripple voltage reading is. Ripple voltage stayed below two and a half volts. That's my threshold on a 12S pack. 
So I've just got a cap pack here. So this is the same thing as plugging in the ESC. We're going to be powering up these capacitors and for a momentary time, the battery or the circuit will see this as a short and we should get a fairly decent spark here. And that's what that snap and spark is from, charging those capacitors up every time you plug in your uh, battery. So the question is, how does this little thing prevent that? Well, if you look inside here, if this thing ever focuses, let me zoom in. Hopefully you can see that, but there's actually a split ring on this side of the female sleeve. There's a little ring at top, there's a green insulation ring, and then the main portion of the bullet sleeve down below. And I've just got my multimeter out here in the ohm scale, and we'll see what that little split sleeve is actually doing. If we just probe the top of the sleeve, you can see we're getting about six ohms or so of resistance. If we slide the probe down into the rest of the sleeve, then we're at zero ohms. So what's happening in here, there's just a small little resistor gapping these two rings. So when you first make the connection, the current is limited going to your ESC capacitors as it goes through that resistor. And as you continue sliding the plug in, by that time, the caps are charged up and you no longer get the spark. And we can demo that. Here's a 10 ohm resistor very close, but we'll do the same test. We'll charge this thing up with this first, and you'll see there's no more spark. Hopefully I've got this all on frame. So we've got our little 10 ohm resistor on the positive alligator clip here, and we're going to touch that to our capacitors first to allow them to slow charge, and you'll see there's no more spark. Now same idea as continuing to slide in the XT90 connector no spark then when we're finally at uh, when we get to the bottom of the connector where there's no resistance very simple way to do things and they don't cost all that much more than just a regular xt90 connector now there is one benefit not to use anti-spark connectors some people like to get that big spark i used to be one of them because it means your capacitors are healthy in your esc if you get that spark all the time, you know these things are working properly. However, over time, you get that pitting, and that will cause problems. And there's also some debate whether or not having a high current charge is actually bad on your capacitors over time. Leave comments below if you think that's the case. I've heard arguments either way. So if you're interested in these things, I've got links to them below in the description if you want to check them out. Like I said, they don't cost all that much more than XT90s. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of soldering XT90 connectors or replacing connectors. I've actually got a separate video on that. I will link to it up in the little card doodad and below in the description. I'm just going to do this real quick. Okay, so here we go again, this time with the anti-spark connectors. So we will hopefully won't get a spark. Same idea, I'm going to put the microphone right down at the plug. No spark. Now, one thing of caution I should mention just unplug this. Be certain you don't just plug it partially in because then you're running all that current through that little resistor. Now obviously that is a given but I often on um, when I'm programming my ESC and I know other people I've seen it seen them do it as well uh, we just lightly plug in our plugs while we're testing things and programming stuff 
but there is enough current draw, especially if you're running a Beck as well, you know, powering up the servos and everything, that little resistor can get bloody hot if you're powering everything through it, if it's not plugged all the way in, because of course the current is running through the resistor and not through the rest of the plug. So just make sure you plug them all the way in so you don't overheat re your resistors. That's anti-spark connectors. Hopefully, if you didn't know much about them, uh, now you can gauge whether or not it's something you'd want to use. Again, 6S and up, uh, the higher the voltage, the bigger the spark. And uh, I really started noticing it on 12S plugs. I was replacing plugs basically every season and uh, I was just getting sick of it. So that's why I've gone to them. Here, for example, is an anti-spark connector that has got, ooh, probably about 70, 75 flights on it. And as you can see, the sleeves, no carbon pitting, look essentially brand new. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy flights, and we'll see you next time.